All right, welcome to my beginner's guide in Roblox scripting. If you clicked on this video, you're probably curious as to how to make a game on Roblox for the first time, because you see all these games on the front page. You see them get so many visits, so many players. The developers probably make so much revenue off of the game passes that they give out to the players. And I'm with you on that. Back, back when I first started, I enjoyed playing the games that I used to play on the platform. And I was very curious into how to create the games that I knew and loved playing. So in this series, I will walk you through the step-by-step -step process on how you can be a better scripter. So let's get into it. Um, what you're seeing right now is the first thing that you see when you load up Roblox Studio. And of course, um, you can't make a Roblox game unless you have Roblox Studio. So I'll put the link to the downloads page in the description of this video. Uh, I encourage you to click on that, download Roblox Studio, and then uh, sign in if you need to. Uh, and then once you do all that, you should be able to see this page that shows you a bunch of different templates to choose from when you want to create your first game. So after you've done all that, what I encourage you to do is follow along what I do. So you're not just looking at my videos. What, what I want you to do is I want you to pull up Roblox Studio and for every single tutorial that I do, I want you to do what I'm doing. I literally want you to copy everything I do so that you can really get the experience ingrained in your mind so that you can do the things that you wanna do without my help once you become more experienced. And I just think this is a better way to get the experience that you need in order to be competent to make the things you love making. So with that out of the way, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a template that Roblox has provided for us. We're not going to use any of these here. We're going to use the regular base plate. So once we click on that, uh, we're going to be dropped into this world view of just a base plate with a spawn location here. And what you notice is that there's a bunch of ribbons showing a bunch of different features that this software has to offer. Like we have a bunch of panels here, a bunch of panels down here, a bunch of panels up here. I'm gonna be explaining the really important stuff you need to know um, moving forward. So there's two very important panels you need to know. And that is on the right side here, the Explorer and the Properties panel. So first I'm gonna talk about the Explorer panel. and the best way I can describe the Explorer panel is that the Explorer panel shows all of the contents that the game that you're trying to create has. It's kind of like, like a directory storage system that visually shows you everything that the game has to offer. So like up here, we can see that we have workspace, players, lighting, uh, replicated storage, all that stuff. But then like there's arrows that you can click on that shows even more contents within the contents itself. So we have base plate, spawn locations, and if we just like uh, click on these, there's even more stuff contained in them. And as you can see, when we highlight them in the Explorer, they're also being highlighted in the world view itself, which like I said, everything that's in the Explorer is a representation of what's in the game. And I don't know if you noticed, but every time I've clicked on an item in the Explorer, our properties window has also changed down here. Now, the best way I can describe the properties window is that this is essentially a panel that shows all of the properties or attributes or variables or whatever you want to call it of every type of part or no, every type of object that you're selecting in the game. So for instance, if I select the spawn location, it's a type spawn location and it has all these attributes correlated to that specific thing, like a brick color. If we click this, we can change the brick color of something. Uh, or here's material. We can change the material of this down here. And as you can see, it's changing whatever I'm changing in the properties down here to what it actually looks like in the workspace. So that's the best way I can describe the properties tab. It's basically like a panel that shows you different properties of whatever type of object you're selecting that's inside of your game's contents. So that's a really important thing to know about. And another really important thing to know about is up here, we have this ribbon that shows you different sections of different features that the software has to offer. Like um, it shows you, it shows you shortcuts, it shows you features, it shows you um, how to insert parts, changing colors of certain things, the game settings, and so many other things here. There's even a view tab here 
that that lets you manage um, other things you can show on your window. There's even other panels here that are hidden that you can reveal in your workspace, like the asset manager or the toolbox or script analysis, things like that. But we're not. Uh, but I'm not going to be showing you in this video. Maybe in the future, but not right now. But what I want you to know is that this ribbon up here has a lot of different things that are going to be very helpful in your in your developer career. So I want you to keep that in mind. And of course, uh, some other basic stuff is that um, just like if you're playing a Roblox game on keyboard and mouse, the way to move around in studio is through W, A, S, and D. W is forward, S is back, A is left, D is right. And then some other helpful things is that if you hold down Q, that actually makes your camera go down. And if you hold E, then your camera goes up. And to move your camera around, you hold the right mouse button, uh, while you drag your mouse around to move wherever you want your camera to look at and then you have the mouse scroll wheel that allows you to zoom in and out as you so desire. So those are some of the very basic features that I want you to be familiar with. So now here's what we're going to do. We're going to mess with the properties window by inserting a part and the way I want you to do it is either through the home tab or through the model tab up here by clicking on part and see what Roblox Studio did was that it inserted a part into the workspace and inside of the Explorer because now that we added a new part to the game's contents, it also added it here into the into the workspace. So now we get a now we get a visually represented part inside of our workspace. And what we can do down here is we can select it either in the Explorer or um, or uh, inside of the the physical 3D world and. Over here in the properties tab, we can change the brick color like so just by clicking on the color here and then just like using this color wheel uh, to pick whatever color we want to change it to. And uh, like I said, I encourage you to do this too. So remember what I said, go up here, either model or home, click part, view on it, and then go to the properties tab here to change the, the colors. It's really important that you do this with me. So I that's what I encourage you to do. So after you change the color of the brick, let's change the material. So down here, we have material that we can just click on, uh, click on the drop down, and then we can change the material to whatever we want, like concrete, or no, maybe something that's more visually apparent, like cracked lava. So we changed it to cracked lava. If we want to make it invisible, we can uh, change the slider here to make it invisible with transparency, but we're not gonna do that. And there's like other properties down here where there's can collide that allows players to walk through it and anchored to make it float without falling due to Roblox's physics. So I want you to mess with the parts here, like like with the part that you created, I want you to just mess around with the properties so that you can familiarize yourself with how parts are added into Roblox Studio and how parts and models are managed across the games that you create. So here's um, so here's another tip for you. Uh, when you're when you're trying to modify parts inside of the game, uh, if you if you go up here to model, like in the model tab, there's there's four things here that are important. Uh, this just ignore the fifth one for right now, but there's four four options here that's very important to know. So you have select, which obviously allows you to select any part that's inside of the game, uh, ones that are not locked. Uh, so that's pretty self-explanatory. But the next one is move, which gives you these three, these axes um, that you're, or these arrows that you're able to just hold and then move them across uh, the the world as as such. If you want to move it around in a more organized way, rather than just selecting it and then just moving around like this, this is a more organized way of moving stuff around. So the next one is similar, but this one is scale, which basically changes the size of the part that you're working with, however you so desire to. And then finally, we have rotate, which it's pretty self-explanatory. It just rotates the part that you want to, that, that you want to work with, the part or model that you want to work with. So that is the very, very basics of, of creating parts in Roblox Studio and getting you to familiarize yourself with Studio itself. So our main takeaways from the basics of Roblox Studio is that you downloaded Roblox Studio, uh, you opened up a base template for the first time, 
and I showed you what the Explorer does and what the properties window does. And I showed you how to create a part and modify its properties and use these different tools to, to modify the part that you're trying to work with in the game. So that's the very basics of of introducing and familiarizing yourself with Roblox Studio for the first time. In the next episode, we're actually going to start scripting uh, using scripts, and I'm going to be showing you how through printing. So what I want you to do is, before you click on the next video, I'm going to give you assignments to do before you actually start watching the next video to really take away from what you just learned from the video. So what I want you to do is, I want you to create more parts using the model and just like continuously insert parts. I want you to do this, and I want you to continue modifying its properties and changing it uh, and changing it through moving it, scaling it, rotating it, etc. And really familiarizing yourself with the Explorer because you can even like move stuff around uh, in the Explorer if you so desire to. So that's your assignment before starting the next episode. I hope you found this episode helpful. Hope to see you in the next one.